YouTube. Hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have a really ill child at home. And um, so my setup was a little bit quick. So today, we've just I've just been asked, what is the topic? Well, it's History Chat Live. And um, on History Chat Live, we do a little look at what um what I've been up to in terms of going places yes Lisa Anna <laughs> chewing gum so hopefully you can hear me now over on YouTube um thank you for letting me know as well that's really really helpful um oh Woodward Jacqueline thank you for buying me the badge thank you so much really appreciated um yes thank you thank you very much um I am trying to like I say buy a new lapel mic so that um I can Bluetooth myself, which will help when I'm out and about as well. So let's finish off 2022 today and I'll let you know a little bit about what's going to be um, different, better, fun, exciting to look forward to in 2023. Excuse me as well, because I do have a bit of a gold, which means that I'm talking like I can't use my nose. Where have I been to? Let's go. So in the past week, since, mm, is it since I saw you? Is it since I saw you last? So I went to see, this one definitely is, I went to see the trial documents of Anne Boleyn's trial. So anyone who doesn't know, let me give you a quick recap. And for those of you who, who do know, you can just nod along. Uh, Anne Boleyn was tried in May 1536. And, um, you know, it's sketchy what she was tried for, but in, effectively incest and... Um, imagining the king's death which is treason when Henry VIII says it is and I got to go and see the actual documents now they're all in Latin so I'm not going to pretend that I could read them I couldn't <laughs> but if you haven't already seen have a look on my after this have a look on my Instagram I have both a post and a reel of of the documents and I have more exciting things to share um, from my visit that I did um, with you over the next few days and weeks. But that that was really fun. Um, and I was also last week at the Victoria Bliss Hill Museum, um, which again, I've set, shared a reel about yesterday and I've probably got, probably got more I'll share with you as well. That was fabulous. It was it because it's set up as a village. You are, and there are other examples, Beamish, um, uh, in the north is one black country museum actually still both of these aren't very far away from me actually um is another example where they've built a village as if it was at the turn of the 19th into the 20th century where you've got a lot of industry in this area mining foundries um people are living close to where they work not quite as close as it's set up and in, in these places of course just by necessity um you've got you know, small, you could see exactly how people lived. They had gardens, they grew their own produce. Nothing went to waste. Nothing went to waste. We, we kick ourselves all the time about how much we waste. Um, but it's not that long ago since we weren't wasting it. You know, my grandparents' generation were not wasting. We can turn this around, people. We can turn it around. But one of the things is to learn to use everything and do it ourselves. So um, one of the examples from the Black Country Museum, actually, was using newspaper for all sorts of things, all sorts of things from um, like sort of draft excluders to uh, making, um, what do you call it, to light the fire, the the splints to light the fires um to toilet paper to you know it was used um uh no Lisa we've not progressed with a lot of things we have revert we have gone backwards we have gone backwards so one of the places on that I that I visited while I was at the Victoria Bliss Hill Museum a shout out to them because they gave me a um a pass for the day so I could go and have a look around um it's part of the Ironbridge Gorge set of museums collection of museums in that area um but one of the places that well, they all fascinated me but the pharmacy was was one a good example now if you wanted to buy vaseline now you buy it and it's in an individual pot um if you wanted to buy it 100 years ago you would take your pot and they would get it out of a pot and weigh it and you would buy it by the weight and you would go off with your pot same if you actually if you're buying milk butter in the grocery shop there would have been a slab of butter they would have cut a bit off weighed it 
popped it into a nice little, you know, the little, um, the, 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 what do you call them? The pats, the patted pats thing, like little wooden things that they put them into a, a pat and you would, they would wrap it up and you would take your butter away in grease with paper. But that's the, that's the sum total of the packaging. So um, let me see. I've got a few comments. Marie, oh, wait, it's set up as a village. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, it is set up as a village. Um, does that mean it takes more than a couple of hours put aside if one would visit? Oh, I mean, it's such a nice experience. I was there last week, so it's pretty cold at the moment. But um, so I'm saying that because if it was warmer, you could take longer over going around. Um, but you go into people's houses. You There's a pub where you can, you know, you can buy beer. There's a fish and chip shop. You can get your fish and chips. Um, there's a sweet shop which I got sweets from there's there's just all sorts it's, it is a full it's it yeah it's a I, I think it's a full day out but yeah you could equally spend just a couple of hours there so that was that so yeah excuse me for um I've got really nose as well <laughs> uh so yeah so you could spend a couple of hours there you could spend more but it's fab so have a look at my reel for from that um that's just a snippet of what I got up to while I was there um yesterday was the anniversary of Mary Queen of Scots becoming queen. So James V of Scotland dying. So you'll have seen um, my post yesterday about that. Um, and um, what was I What was I going to tell you about that? I can't remember. Oh, my goodness, everybody. It's clearly the end of the year. Um, Katie Bridge, what more would you want? A, yeah, a pub and a sweet shop. Exactly. Um, yes, Marie. So it's fully interactive. You can go into the shops. This, we're back to Victoria Bliss Till Museum now. You can go into the shops. You can buy things in the shops. And you can buy it with um, today's money. Or you can go to the bank and have it exchanged into, you know, pennies, farthings, etc. So you can you can buy an old money as well, which is which is which is cool. So it's it's always full of kids I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can go back next week if my daughter's better and uh, and take her there because it was it was fun it was really really fun um so yes uh yesterday was the anniversary of Mary Queen of Scots becoming queen I know why I was going to tell you this so when James V her father um died so he's he's on his deathbed his baby daughter who he's never met is six days old. He realizes he's dying. He gets news that his daughter, sorry, his, yes, that his daughter has been born, that his wife's given birth to a baby girl. And he exclaims something along the lines of, and there's a couple of different um, variations on the wording that I've heard of this, but, uh, you know, a dew, it came with a lass and it'll pass with a lass. So it's came, it came, came with a girl, it will go with a girl. Um, and I, the reason I'm mentioning that one, because it was the anniversary yesterday, but two, if you're in my Patreon, then the blog this month, which will be out this weekend is about what he was talking about, why that phrase, why he used that phrase, what he was actually going on about. Last month, I was talking in the, it was quite an extensive um, article last month on Thomas Tresham, the man that Elizabeth's court Elizabeth's um, government wish never existed because he was a loyal Catholic. These were these were people that were told that the population at the time were told did not exist. You can't be loyal to the Queen and be a Catholic. Thomas Tresham was both of those things. He was loyal to the Queen and he was a Catholic, and so he caused all sorts of um, problems, I suppose, in that in that way. And so last month's uh, blog on Patreon, you can also get it on my Substack. Um, if you if you go if you're a paid subscriber to my Substack, that was quite an extensive blog. So this month it is um, shorter, but it is about that whole phrase that James V used on his deathbed when he heard that his daughter Mary had been born and he was leaving the throne to a six-day-old baby girl. It came, we alas, it will pass, we alas. So I go into um, into that and explain about that. Um, so if you want, if you're not a member of my Patreon and you'd like to be, it's five pounds a month. So I've, I've made it, I've made it kind of the, the, the lowest it can be, um, 
in terms of uh, money so that so that hopefully you know I, if you want to be in there you, the money's not a barrier so it's patreon.com forward slash British history um, and as I said earlier if you want to just support me on an ad hoc basis you can buy me super chats on YouTube badges on Instagram you can only buy badges though and super chats actually think about it when I'm actually live you can't do it after the fact so if you're watching this after the fact and you would like to support me um, you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash philippa p-h-i-l-i-p-p-a right that out of the way let's have a look at some more places so we got through to Westminster Abbey and Westminster Hall last week didn't we that's as far as we got now I have 51 52 places I've been this year um it should have been more actually but you know life gets in the way sometimes so let me t- I'm gonna have to just pick out some I'm gonna tell you where ev- all the places I've been and if there's somewhere I say and I don't cover it and you want me to pop it in the comments or if you've been there yourself as well I'm quite interested to know um because I'm not the only one who gets to go out and, and about um so yeah so we got to um Westminster and Westminster Abbey and Westminster Hall last week. Selworthy Church is somewhere that I shared about in the summer. Um, uh, Oh, I've just realised there's a place that's not on here. Colbone Church, I shared about that as well. Colbone Church is the smallest functioning parish church in the country. Now, I don't know if they mean England or Britain, but it is small. It also dates back it has the the site and actually one of the windows dates back to Anglo-Saxon times it's it's pre-Norman conquest um I also scaled what can only be described as a sheer rock face pretty much um nearby to visit another chapel which again um there's a there's a reel of um from August uh, this year and it was there's there was a two walls I think left and an archway so one of the doorways was left um and it's incredible when you think about a building people have gone to the effort of building the building people go to the building it's important for the local community and now it's just two walls so that was that was quite amazing but Selworthy Church is a whitewashed church and all the churches, I think, in the area, it's in um, North Somerset on the Devon border, so South England, South West England, um, fairly near to the sea. So, um, you know, the weather fluctuations that you get there and they would whitewash it. And this is something that apparently all the churches in the area would have done. But for some reason, Selworthy have carried on and it is it sticks out on the hillside. Um, it's it's really beautiful. There is a Tudor built, so a, a, a wing. Um, the I can't remember which side of the church, but a, a that, that was built um, during the well, in fact, just before the Reformation. Um, so it was pretty amazing. Hi, Lottie. Hi, Becky. Hi, uh, Aston. Jamie, well, welcome. Um, so anyway, those places, Coat and Court, Coat and Court, I went to for the first time, which is mad because it's not that far away from me. When I've spoken about Harvington Hall in the past, um, Mary, do they whitewash the interior as well? No, it's just the exterior. And it is, I believe, unless I've got this completely wrong, I believe it is to help protect the actual building. It's sort of a, um, you know, it's, it is a practical um, thing as well, um, just to protect the building. Chewing gums, Devon Cormor is really picturesque part of the UK. It is, it is amazing. So where I sort of go um, and like to try and spend some time is on the North Devon border with Somerset. So I'm just inside Somerset, it's Exmoor. Thank you, Lottie Rose, for the badge. Thank you ever so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, if, uh, yes, yeah, so if anyone's been to Exmoor, you'll know it's, in, it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful and when I'm down there I can't help but share like you know must be on holiday generally um but can't help but share um 
because you have it's it's an ancient landscape. So you, um, I went to a place called Saint Agnes's Fountain, which um, which I've been trying to find for years, and it's a it's an ancient spring. It's an ancient spring, and anywhere you see somewhere like that on an ordnance survey map, you know it's going to have some history, um, and it's it, you get then it's exactly what you think an ancient spring should look like rocks and really green foliage around and you sort of just come across it without knowing it's it's there which of course with the dogs as well they loved it well we just had hugo at the time um because he could have a drink <laughs> it was very warm <laughs> so so that was really cool but yes devon cornwall somerset absolutely beautiful so if any of you are ever visiting the uk and you've got maybe a little of an extended holiday here and you want to get out and see kind of that um kind of England you imagine from watching something like the holiday with cottages and fields and sheep then I would suggest the southwest is is a pretty good bet um I went to Gloucester Cathedral now Gloucester Cathedral is so if any I mean it's got a lot of history <laughs> but also if you are any Harry Potter fans, um, the cloisters you'll recognise. In fact, the cloisters has also been used. I think I, I might have asked you all this when I had just had been, but I'm pretty sure it was in one of the more recent films about Elizabeth. Um, and I can't remember which one, but I think the cloisters have been used in in a, in a film about Elizabeth I as well. Um, Gloucester Cathedral is where... Um, uh, oh, am I going to get this wrong? Ed the Second is buried. Quick, someone Google it for me. I can't remember. Uh, who was murdered at Barclay Castle, which I also went to. I took a tour group there in September. Um, so, a lot of the places that we we go to, I go and do a you know a, a visit beforehand to make sure everything's in place. So um, I've been lucky. Some of these places I've been to twice, um, twice or three, two or three times during this year. Gloucester Cathedral. Um, is also a place that if you wanted to follow in the footsteps of Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII, um, you could go to, um, they, they were, they visited there, I'm looking for my ruler, ruler. they visited there on, um, their 15, summer 1535 progress. Always I could see the different colored hearts. That's what you get if you get a badge, you get a badge people, you get a different colored heart. Um, yeah, so they visited there. There's also... Um, a monument just outside so that's one of the gate excuse me one of the gates into the precinct is still pretty much as it was so when we think of a gate it's like a, a wall that it's like you've got you've got a continuous precinct wall you would have done and the gates they still have buildings all around in in the walls and the gates which have the rooms above um and bishop hooper um was burnt oh thank you chewing gums yes it is edward the <laughs> second thank you um so he's he's murdered at barker castle buried at gloucester cathedral um it was also the site uh, site of a coronation which again this is what i'm looking for i really really i can't remember all the richards and edwards um who uh so who was cr crowned there as a boy um yeah, Lottie, I spoke about Bishop Hooper before, didn't I? When I went to uh, when I went to when I went to Gloucester, I think. And yeah, so he was burned at the stake um, just outside the precinct, and his uh, his clergy, the monks, um, were forced to watch from a, a room through a window that still exists. Um, and there was nothing there until the Victorian era. And uh, we know the Victorians got very nostalgic for their history, um, messed about with it a little, little bit, but um, there was an excavation done or there was some digging done on this site and they found a charred, um, you know, remains of a stake. And so that was taken to be the the stake um, that Bishop Hooper was um, tied to when he was executed and he was incredibly popular in the in the um local area so it was it was a it was a big um 
was going to say a big deal, but you know, he he was um, he, his execution was particularly sorely felt. Um, yes, Lottie, a lot of people came to support. So a lot of people came to the execution, but in order to support him, not you know, not to. Um, not because they agreed with the execution, if you see what I mean. Um, hi, Lisa, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Car Car yeah, is that what you say it, Carolina? Um, uh, Colleen, welcome. Hello, I can see you there. And uh, Pat, <laughs> you know what I'm like with handles? Pajamajana, there. Um, anyway, so Gloucester Cathedral and Barclay Castle. Barclay Castle also, so we went there um in September on tour thank you Jenna for the badge much appreciated thank you so much um uh, and again Barclay Castle is somewhere that if you go you are uh following the footsteps of Anne Boleyn Elizabeth I Elizabeth went there on multiple occasions and the lawn on which she used to play I think where she used to play bowls is is still there in fact they have a garden sculpture of Elizabeth in, in the place so you you know you're in the right place if you do that if you if you come across that um there's a few things at Barclay Castle that I don't know if I've mentioned before if I have forgive me but I'll mention them again which it might not be the sort of things you think I'd pick out one of the things that is really incredible is you walk into this uh, room it's quite large uh it's quite uh, the ceilings are quite tall but you've got um uh, like an ape apex is that what you call it um and there's a little corridor like almost like a mini cloister along the left hand side and I, I'd been there before and completely forgotten about this room <laughs> but it was a chapel and as you know that you look around and you can tell you can start to see features and actually um there is, I think I shared this with my patrons. Um, and if you're not a member, can become a member, patreon.com forward slash British history. And you get to see all this sort of stuff. There is inscriptions in uh in the the root the roof beams, sort of along the along the side. Uh inscriptions from the Bible that you can just about see. But again, if you didn't know to look, um, you probably wouldn't see them. I love things like that. Um, and also. So this is is interesting because you realise that you haven't seen, once you see this, you haven't seen it before, fabric, wallpaper. So we're used to hearing about hangings in castles, um, but this is, this is, um, and I think, I'm sure it, they said it dated back to Tudor times, but fabric wallpaper, wall, I'm saying fabric wallpaper, as in it's hung like we would hang wallpaper um in strips jutted up against each other completely covering the wall and the reason that um that we wouldn't see that anywhere or many places in fact I don't think I've seen it anywhere else um is because you get moths in it and it gets destroyed it's it's incredible um that it survived um and is there anything I don't, I don't know how they make sure that it does, it ca continues to survive because surely, you know, anything could sort of happen to it if it's a, um, a problem with moths and things like that. Lisa, who wrote the Bible scriptures? Uh, good question. I can't remember. It's, um, so it, it's no longer a chapel and it wasn't a chapel um, from something else at the time. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but I think you're sort of talking back to the 1300s, 1400s when it was a chapel. Um, the fabric wallpaper and hygienic. I don't know. It was sort of mm, a bit like it's very dense. It's not like having like a big fluffy carpet on the wall. It was quite dense, um, but beautifully decorated. It was actually dark red and it has um, uh I don't know if it's metal fastenings in it. It had a pattern on it. Um, yeah. 
which was um which was which was incredible so there's there's two things that are a bit out of uh, out of the ordinary to look out for at Barclay Castle um yeah I imagine it was good for insulation Lottie I think that's the thing it, it like um like we think of hangings you know, oh yes of course they put up hangings to make it feel a bit warmer and then and then it you know actually they have this fabric wallpaper um Shakespeare so we went over to Stratford um yeah you can't launder it when it's fused to the wall now you can't give it a good bashing either like you can with a hanging um oh Jenna says not a very good idea in humidity not really an issue here in England um not usually anyway the Vanderbilt's mansions have silk wallpaper it smells musty and falls off the wall yeah yeah I can imagine well th this is it this is why it doesn't survive and so when you see a survivor um even when it's just something as something as potentially seen as mundane as wallpaper <laughs> or wall hangings um it's fabulous thank you lisa for the badge thank you very very much um thank you very very much appreciated so i went over to stratford we um i took a tour group there in july um this was part of the elizabeth the first tour next year i have the private life of Anne Boleyn tour with some spaces, which is the very, very end of June into July, 29th of June uh, to the 4th of July. And I have the Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots tour, uh, which is, which also has some spaces that's in September. So if you want to come on a, if you want to meet me actually in person, Gareth Russell is my um, tour historian for those tours. So when I say tour historian, when I'm in tours, I have someone with me, for the entire time so right from pick up to drop off and they're there um they give talks as well so gareth will be giving talks but he's there to talk to us about the places we're going answer any ad hoc questions as well um you get to basically pick his brains for the tour which um i mean i think i yeah you let him knock off about eight nine o'clock at night or whatever but but you get to get to to chat to gareth russell gareth russell people um, for the whole tour now sorry but Stratford Stratford somewhere we went um, last July on the Elizabeth I tour we went to the Guild Hall which is also known as Shakespeare's schoolroom hands up if you've been there um, or up to Stratford indeed Stratford's quite a compact town um, no I've not done it well we've done sorry Caroline's asking about doing a, a, a theatre tour did a tour of the globe as part of a previous tour which I might bring back um yeah Colleen Jenna come on come and see me come and see me in real life I do look after you um very very much so from beginning to end the only thing you need so everything is included in your ticket except lunch and anything lunches of which sometimes I actually provide them and um depending on the itinerary and souvenirs everything else your dinners your accommodation your transport your admissions your historian talks guided tours um and you know give you a few presents along the way that's all included in your ticket price and each tour especially next year uh well definitely next year should i say has at least one night at heaver castle staying at heaver castle and the, the hotels are great anyway that I choose because I want to look after you and we want to do some cool stuff together. So, yeah, so so Stratford was one place we went last year. So the Shakespeare, sorry, the um, the schoolroom, Guildhall, also known as Shakespeare's schoolroom, um, is. Uh, so it, 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 it's obviously, obviously the, the link to Shakespeare and is still used by the school, by the way, the grammar school. Um, he went to school there. Um, at a time where children of all ages went to in in the same classes and they would be taught by rote um they would they would learn literally they would learn to deconstruct language and construct language um and it, but it was the top room the guild hall was under underneath um yet yeah. <laughs> sorry move uh well, as you say, and if you uh, bring an extra empty suitcase for all the books, because, yeah, no control around books. There would be a lot of books to buy if you were coming, um, if you're coming on tour with me. There is um, 
so not only do we have a tour historian but we have historians come in to talk as well um next year i've also got jay the tudor songbook if any of you haven't seen jay britain the tudor songbook on um i think she's on youtube she definitely um does a lot on um instagram as well look her up she is coming to uh entertain us um estelle peronk have, have, if you haven't seen it yet have a look at my interview with estelle um, it's on youtube and it's on the podcast talking about um, she's just written the book Blood, Fire and Gold, which is a dual biography of um, Elizabeth I and Catherine de' Medici. Uh, she will be on the uh, September tour, so the Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots tour. She's doing the talk on the last night, which is very exciting. So, yeah, you'll end up buying <laughs> buying books or bringing them with you to get, get people to sign them. Uh, and Gareth's got a lot of books for you to, to choose from. Um, to bring to sign so but sorry back to Shakespeare's schoolroom so yes yeah, so you have the schoolroom above actually they've got it set up so half is set up as if it was in Shakespeare's time and half when it was Georgian school um, where you get to you get a chance to write um, with a quill and well not a quill quill yeah anyway so oh Colleen's reading Blood Fire and Gold now isn't it amazing that book The House of Dudley and um, well, those two especially, and obviously, and I will put in The Red Prince, um, the John of Gaunt book by Helen Carr, House of Dudley by Joanne Paul, and Estelle Pronk's book, Blood, Fire and Gold. Because they're looking at, oh, the other one I would say is Leander Delisle's The Sisters Who Would Be Queen. They're looking at what we feel probably is quite familiar territory. And um, I have an interview with Joanne Paul, by the way, coming out in January. Uh it's like looking in to a familiar room, but from a different window or from a different angle. So we're looking at the same story and, we're, and you find out different things that you, you just didn't know or didn't see it from that perspective. Those books are incredibly cool for that. Incredibly cool for that. Um, uh, the, sorry, back to the Guildhall in, in Stratford. Downstairs. So this is the Guildhall where literally you had the town guilds you had the mayor Shakespeare William Shakespeare's father um was uh ba town bailiff for a while and it's thought that perhaps um that Shakespeare William Shakespeare young William Shakespeare would have seen traveling players come to the town traveling players had to go to the guild hall perform what they were going to perform and be approved basically that that was okay and the thought is that perhaps William Shakespeare saw travelling players um, at the Guild Hall, um, potentially. He could have seen them on the street equally, I suppose, couldn't he? But you can go there and it was also doubled up as a chapel. So at the end, they found these original medieval paintings when it was a chapel, um, which, which, are, which are beautiful. Next door is um oh what's the name of the church it's called the Guildhall church i'm sure it's called the Guildhall church it's right next door anyway um and there's doom paintings that were covered up by william shakespeare's father whose name i'm desperately trying to remember um whitewashed over as were many of these sorts of paintings during the um the reformation and, and on, on well, this one was particularly the Reformation, and then uncovered later on, uncovered thankfully, um, sympathetically and well, so that um, they they still, um, so that they still, uh, so they, so they survived. Um, uh, Marie, I remember pre-ordering two more books two weeks ago on your suggestion that both came out next year. One is Traces. Yeah, so. Uh, John, thank you, Lottie. John Shakespeare was William Shakespeare's father. <laughs> thank you, Lottie Rose. Uh, so, yeah, the books. So, so Tracy Borman's got a book coming out about Elizabeth I and Anne Boleyn. Uh, and if you're on my May tour, so each May we do the Anne Boleyn tour. Tracy is talking to us at Hampton Court Palace. Uh, in the room, hopefully, we need to book it, but hopefully in the room that Jane Seymour 
gave birth and, and died in. So we get to see that. It's not on the visitor trail. Um, and it's a day before that book is actually published. She's giving us a talk about the book. Yay. So that's that's really cool. The other one, I don't know what other one would have been on pre-order that I've recommended. Oh, could be Mortal Monarchs. Was it Mortal Monarchs? Maybe it was Mortal Monarchs. Thank you, RM Smith 506 for the badge. Thank you so much. That's five people who've bought me a badge today. Thank you so much. Um, do you know, actually, there is a, 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 a limit that I can't get I can't get to the cash until uh, until I hit a certain limit. So thank you, you helping me every moment get closer to getting <laughs> to getting some some more equipment. Nearby shakes uh, nearby to Stratford, um, and also sorry in Stratford you can go to the house that Shakespeare was was born in, and I must have spoken before about how that house that house and the fact that it that P.T. Barnum wanted to move it to America was the whole beginnings of the Shakespeare's birthplace trust. Thank you for the badge, Colleen. Thank you so much. Um, you have, you have given me a badge during the last three lives. So thank you ever so much. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so Shakespeare's birthplace was the, the reason that Shakespeare's birthplace trust began. Um, it's, because P.T. Barnum wanted to move it to uh, to America and uh, and various people at the time, very influential. But so even to Prince Albert, I believe, uh, Victoria's husband um, uh, stepped in and an act of parliament was 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 passed for the birthplace trust. Anyway, so means you can go and see it when you're inside. There is a window that they've moved from the window and replaced it with playing glass and they've moved it inside to protect it and it 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 has served as or in the past as basically a visitor's book so you can see hundreds of signatures in the glass pane so if you do get to go it, it's sort of in a in a you can you can actually miss it you sort of have to go off to the side do make sure you go in and have a look and give yourself a bit of time to have a look because you will probably see some famous names uh, on that on that window. Near to Stratford, um, near enough that it's mm, thought by some, but there's no evidence for this, that William Shakespeare may well have been at Kenilworth and seen the the. The, the the pageantry and everything that that Robert Dudley put on for Elizabeth the first in fifteen seventy five, possibly. Um, I mean, when I say it's close, it's still it's a pretty good walk. So I don't know. Um, but Kenilworth Castle is close by. <sighs> Kenilworth Castle, just it is a romantic ruin made a bit more romantic by the fact that Victoria decided to pull bits down to make it so. Mm. Not too long ago, but probably longer ago than I think, uh, English Heritage, who run the site, put in um, some metal staircases, really substantial. Thank you for the badge, Pat. Thank you ever so much. Um, and uh, so that you can go inside Elizabeth the first apartment. So these are the apartments that that Robert Dudley built for her, um, for her to come and stay. And you, so you could get to, up to the right level. You can see out of the windows that she would have seen out of. Um, now the 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 mere the lake that surrounded the castle has now is now drained. But you can kind of, you can get an idea. So other than that, um, you can get an you can get a really good idea of what what the views were like, what Elizabeth would have been looking out onto, um, and also it means you can get up close to things like the fireplaces, um, and try and imagine as it as it was. If you go, make sure you go into the gatehouse. I think they call it Leicester's Gatehouse. Actually, inside there. The bo- uh, in, in the in the lower room is a fireplace that came out of Elizabeth's apartments, and it has Robert Dudley's uh, initials on there, and and his badges, um, and his motto. 
it's amazing. It's amazing. So, um, so you can see that. And because the gatehouse, when the, the, the castle is in ruin, like many, because it was slighted after the English civil wars, it was a, it stood for the royalist cause. And so one of the things that uh, happened to, to castles and um, castles that 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 um that stood for the royalist cause where they were slighted so they were made indefensible that's why a lot of the curtain wall is 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 down it's why um a lot of the walls are missing but like i say the victorians also did a little bit of um modification themselves to make it more romantic uh um but it's an incredible sight not far from there is um is uh, so, uh what's it called Ken oh, just Kenworth Priory um Lottie Rose did I hear you right that Victorians that Victoria not Victoria herself <laughs> deliberately pulled more of it down but yeah the, the the story goes that there that um I mean I don't know what kind of state it was in and whether it was also a safety issue I don't know but um I'm sure somebody does yes they supposedly um tore a bit more of it down to make it more romantic make it more romantic ruin <laughs> there you go um sorry lisa says the sisters who would be queen book that i mentioned a little bit earlier by leander delisle really held her attention great book it is a great book changed my um th that I, I read that book and estelle's book blood fire and gold um around about the same time and started to change my view of Elizabeth the first actually yeah so um and the whole succession planning and lack of it really started to, to to alter my view so anyway not far away from Kenilworth Castle is Kenilworth Priory which I went to for the first time um and St Nicholas's Church St Nicholas's Church still stands the Priory does not but you can see the remain the you know the ruins which is now the graveyard actually for the castle uh, for um sorry excuse me for St Nicholas's church um now Elizabeth I did um worship in St Nicholas's church so you can visit she she would she went there during um during at least one of her visits to Kenilworth Castle James I was also there at time at a time and 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 back before then, um, uh, there was the uh, the kings who went there um, and stayed. I can't. Remember, there's one particular king who stayed there for ages. I can't think who it was. But Richard the Third is supposed to have popped into Kenilworth Priory on his way to Bosworth. So it's um yeah it's a um yeah really you know atmospheric um, place to go. I, I find it really cool. Uh, I spoke about Harvington Hall. That was a place I've been to lots this year. Very, very lucky. Penshurst Place um, is near to Hever Castle. If any of you have uh, not managed to go, uh, it is. Uh, it was the it was the seat of the um, Sydney family. So Mary Sydney, who was Robert Dudley's sister, uh, was also a lady in waiting to Elizabeth the um, First. She. Uh, nursed her during the smallpox um that she had elizabeth recovered fairly well um mary caught it from nursing elizabeth and and she did recover in terms of she stayed alive but she was um she was disfigured and scarred um and basically retreated from court and would be at pencil's place and elizabeth would go and visit i don't think she ever um, acknowledged Mary's role and thanked her. But uh, and Pencil's Place is if you've ever you've seen the uh, the um, painting of Robert Dudley and Elizabeth dancing La Volta. Now I can't remember whether it was supposed to be based there or whether that's where the painting was. But um, you get to see um, you get to see a copy of that painting when you go. Incredible big great hall. Um, looks a bit like uh, Barclay Castle's Hall, actually. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's another place. Oh, do you know what, people? We've still got loads to go. We've got loads to go. I'm going to have to go through these really, really quick. But 
if you want me to um, say any more about any any more, let me know. I made it to Wales this year. Very bad of me not to have gone. But of course, during the pandemic, they they closed um, even longer and harder than than we did. Um, and I hadn't made it there yet. So I did a little bit of a trip out. Uh, we went to Cardiff Castle. Um, in Cardiff Castle, I mean, there's loads again, there's loads of interest at Cardiff Castle. Um, it, um, it, there's, there's the, cause it's, it's back to a Norman castle, but built on a Roman site. We find this quite a lot that, um, that Norman castles are built on top of or around about where Roman forts were. Cause of course they've already picked a defensible spot. You've already probably got, um, some substantial foundations in terms of the, um, the curtain walls. And so Cardiff's an example of that. You, um, so you have the um, the uh, the the Mott and Bailey, but um, the curtain wall is you can go into, you can walk around it pretty much all the way around, and it was used as an air raid shelter in World War Two because Cardiff is fairly industrial, so it was a it was a target, um, and um, yeah the 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 castle was I say industry actually it was mining wasn't it I think it was mining um so pivotal and and still a target so the yeah the the, the curtain wall was was made into an air raid shelter which again I, I'm pretty sure I, I I've shared as a reel um on my Instagram so you can have a look at that Caerleon Caerleon was again I I love Roman history in Britain I love Roman history in Italy as well or anywhere actually I can find it <laughs> but uh Yes, I've never been to Caerleon. There is the most incredibly, um, I would say complete, but you know, bearing in mind this is two thousand years old, uh, amphitheatre, still with some of the steps that people walked up to get into their seats, the entrances through which um, competitors and I don't know animals, whatever, would be taken into the arena, a um a shrine to oh I forget every time one of the goddesses um uh oh but she'll come to me afterwards I'm sure um but there's still you can still see the alcove where the the statue would have would have sat um so carely on anyone who hasn't been go 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 on a nice day but it's it it that was that was quite a um, a pleasant surprise to me and there's a museum not too far uh well in Caerleon uh with loads of artifacts which of course they found at the amphitheater the barracks so they found all these all these things um Pembroke Castle went to Pembroke Castle um of course this is where Henry the Seventh was born so where Ma um Margaret um Beaufort gave birth at the age of 13. Underneath is a prehistoric I'm going to call it cave which was I don't know if any of you get like energy when you're going to going to places but this had an energy it was and and I I, I went down into it and you can't it's one of those places you you so you go down um you go down a spiral stone staircase and you go into this just huge cavern and you can't help but just go, oh, or wow, or whatever, you know, you, everyone, everyone makes a noise. And I was there you know, taking pictures and video of, as I do everywhere I go. And everyone who walked in, everyone, no matter, you know, how old they were, walked in and just went, wow. It was, it was just fantastic. Um, yeah, so... Uh, uh, yeah, so so Pembroke Castle, where, uh, like I say, where Henry VII was born. Um, also, William Marshall, big, um, you know, it's significant in in his uh, his story. William Marshall, the greatest knight, the book of which I've still got to finish. <laughs> um, and I also went to Chepstow Castle again. Significant. He he built a lot at Chepstow Castle. Um, William Marshall is very interesting because he is known as the greatest knight but he his career if you like to call it that began before knighthood chivalry uh, was defined he lived through the era where coats of arms became a thing banners became a thing 
and some of the stories of how they um, would earn their keep, um, especially as young fighters, really, really quite incredible. Complete surprise to me. So they would have tournaments um, of which the joust later on is a um, really tame version, <laughs> I have to say. And William Marshall, so you would you would have um, sort of gangs of, of, of what we would now call knights, but they didn't have that sort of defined um at the beginning at least um and they would literally earn their keep by riding into these sort of games and taking hostages taking horses taking you know whatever um and william marshall perfected this way of stopping someone else's horse <laughs> being able to to grab hold of the reins and, and and incredible it must have been so physical so so physical that sounds ridiculous of course it would have been um but like superhuman physical but anyway so so um Pembroke Castle and and Car uh, excuse me um Chepso Castle both um both significant in the life of William Marshall and I went there Cleve Abbey I have waxed lyrical about a number of times on this live and on visiting Tudor Britain um and anywhere I can if you are a member of my Patreon you will have had a vir there's a virtual tour in Patreon of Cleve Abbey um uh, where else Chedworth Roman Villa yes clean the horse whisperer I think it was a bit more I think it was less whispering and more just grabbing <laughs> he got hold of the horse. can you imagine so he's on a horse or was he on a horse actually I think the first time he tried it I'm not sure whether he had already been unhorsed woo, woo, mad uh yeah, so it went to a place called Chedworth Roman Villa, which I thought perhaps I'd missed um, because it was down uh, it was down a country road and I thought I thought it was going to be small. That's what I thought. I thought when I get there, there's going to be like one person in a hut uh, at the entrance <clears throat> and it's going to be a small site. No, <laughs> when I got there, full-on cafe, shop, loads of staff, loads of people. Um, and a big, big site. So again, I will have shared um, this uh, throughout the year. So, you know, when you're bored over Christmas, just have a look back through my reels um, because I've I've shared some really amazing places this year. But at Chedworth Roman Villa, there is a bathhouse, which um, they got lottery funding. And so now it's it's got, it, it you know, it's been, had, had a, a hut for want of a better word built over the top to protect it but it's managed to be there for 2000 years already and the mosaic floor um is quite extensive you can also see the underfloor heating system that they had i mean we could learn so much by just looking at what's been done in the past i don't really understand I don't get why we're always supposed to have to move completely forward. Everything has to be brand new when there's plenty we can learn from in the past. I think it's almost, um, I think we're told it has to be new because people don't make money out of stuff that's already gone before. I don't know what it is, but the Romans had underfloor heating. They did it very, very well. Um, and I will say though, I went also to Gloucester, the museum of, um, uh, the Gloucester Museum, which is has also another name, I just can't think of Corinium Museum. They have there's loads of Roman history in Gloucester, and actually, I've been invited to go back, and I will be going back to do some more stuff there. Um, the 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 Romans, there's, there's loads of loads of um, finds in Gloucester, which are now in the museum of mosaic floors, um, uh, friezes, so wall um, paintings where they would a frieze is where they've painted the or yeah the 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 um the decoration into wet plaster then it dries and so it's 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 not paint on top of a dried um plaster so it can't come off um there's nothing new under the sun caroline was that shakespeare 
I don't know. Anyone know? Was that a Shakespeare line? It sounds like a Shakespeare line, doesn't it? There's nothing new under the sun. We quote Shakespeare all the time, don't we? And just don't know it. So, so this museum at Gloucester, they then, of course, remember the Romans came before the Anglo-Saxons, termed for ages the Dark Ages. Mm. Um, yeah, the underfloor heating system survived too. Um, yeah, because because most of the floor survived. So underneath it has survived as well. And it's basically uh, a fire which would be stoked at one end, which would heat the air, and it's stacks. I'm doing this. For those who are listening on the podcast, um, just have to imagine stacks of tiles, um, which would hold the floor. So they're substantial, but it means there's lots of airspace in between. Also fabulous for you know the damp climate that England can be. Um, and the, the, the warm air would circulate underneath. So really sort of simple and um, straightforward. Then we go into the quote unquote dark ages, which we don't refer to as that anymore because it's a really bizarre way of referring to it and um, just completely inaccurate. Chewing gums, underfloor heating is still much more effective than normal radiators and actually more cost efficient too, which is um, really blinking important now, seeing as energy costs are going up left, right and centre. So um, uh, where was I? What was I saying? Oh, yes, the, the Gloucester Museum went through the Roman bit with with their amazing, you know, mosaics and friezes. And you go into the Anglo-Saxon part and it feels a little bit more like going back to basics. So we, we have little left of Anglo-Saxon England other than in churches because things weren't built in stone. So they went back to building um in in wood and, and and things like that so um they don't stay as much now i did go to and i spoke about this last week didn't i odders chapel and um st mary's church in deerhurst which is fantastic if you want to go back to anglo-saxon england um but yeah so this museum you go through and i realized and it could just be here but i think i've noticed i could i could go back and think about other museums i've been to there is Roman jewellery, but when you get into the Anglo-Saxon jewellery, it's exquisite. Like, it's precision. It's detailed in miniature. It's the the patterns um, on, on the jewellery are just incredible. Not only beautiful, but mathematically, as somebody with no mathematical bone in my body, um, just the patterns how did they do that how did they do that anyway that's quite incredible um so yeah so that was good um i've talked about st agnes's fountain um worcester cathedral i was very lucky i've been to worcester cathedral i think three times this year this is the burial place of arthur tudor and king john and uh it's um it, I mean, it's beautiful anyway, um, long history. You're very close to somewhere called the Commandery, which I know I bang on about because I just love it. It The, the Commandery was a monastic hospital linked to the, um, to the Abbey as it was, cathedral. And, well, it was always a cathedral, actually, um, but with with monks living there <laughs> um and uh uh yeah so the commandery so and the medieval um wall paintings are still there because they were covered up again another whitewashing and then uncovered a lot lot later so you can go there um uh very heavy apparently can you imagine wearing that that jewelry for 10 minutes alone you need a physio afterwards yes but it seems like yeah so i mean there's the talks um which were incredibly heavy, but then things like um, belt buckles, clasps, um, what I suppose we call them like brooches, just like really, really beautiful. I shared some um, from when I went to the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford last year. Um, just exquisite, absolutely exquisite. 
so yeah, so if you go to Worcester Cathedral, make sure you pop along to the commandery as well. It's it was it's they actually don't know why it's called the commandery. It could be for a few reasons. However, let me just tell you, it was actually the headquarters for the Royalist forces at the Battle of Worcester, which was the final battle of the English Civil Wars. Um uh, uh, fought out um at the back of the commandery. Um and where the Royalist force is bedded in is now called Royal Fort Royal Hill. Um, and the commander, a um, man called Hamilton, General Hamilton, uh, was uh, he died actually in the commandery after the battle. Um, I went to St John the Baptist Church in Siren Sister. They have the Anne Boleyn Cup. So some of you might have seen uh, me share about this. The Anne Boleyn Cup has the Falcon badge of Anne Boleyn on the top of it it is um very well protected behind glass and uh and um i know a grill and i was there to see uh dan jones speak about his latest book essex dogs this is his first fiction um but yeah i got to see the anne Boleyn cup which is just amazing and there is uh there is a story that tracy borman told me last year that when when she was there and she was talking to uh to the people at the church that the queen the late late Queen Elizabeth II had come to the church and had seen this cup and had said, oh, I've got one just like it. <laughs> so there's a pair. Who knew? Well, the Queen knew. Well, the Queen knew once she saw there was another one. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Mm. We're over an hour, but if you, want to, if you want to keep going, people, I've got a little bit more I can tell you all about. Um, Oh, I know what I need to tell you about. And I did I did mention this um, when I went, but the um, video I've got about the Lord Leicester Hospital, which is currently closed to the public, but which I got access to. And I also interviewed um, the master there, a lady called um, Heidi Mayer. That will be coming out this week. I'm just doing the last few edits on it. So I thought I'll get that. Um, I'll get that out before Christmas. Um, so Marie, oh, the, slightly underwhelmed how teeny it was. No, it's about, I don't know, it's about that big. The top of my head to my chest bone. It's not chest bone, top of my ribs. Um, no, it's quite big. It's quite big. Uh, it's really pretty. It's just pretty. It's nice. I don't know what, what it's for, but there you go. So, um, uh, yeah, the Lord Leicester Hospital. So like I say, it's closed to the public at the moment, but I've done some filming there. I will be going back in the summer when it's opened to show you the difference. But you'll be able to see the interview. I thought I will get it out before, get it out before Christmas. Um, that's my intention. <clears throat> um, so that you can all see it uh, over the break. Um, also, Helen, my interview with Helen Carr, that was that only went live last weekend on Sunday. So if you haven't caught that, you can catch that on YouTube and on the podcast. You can get the links to all this, by the way, um, on my Instagram bio and in the top of my YouTube channel. You should be able to find all the links you, you need. Um, where else did I go? Oh, yes. So I don't know if I've told you. So uh, last weekend, the weekend before. Yeah, it probably does look smaller in the case, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because it is in the case, if I come back to take a picture or um, or a video, you, you you can't really get the, you can't really see the, the size of it. And it's behind this thick glass. So, yeah, so... Um, went to Salisbury Cathedral and uh I if you haven't seen it have a look at my reel of the font they have like an, I call it an infinity font maybe that's what they call it I've got no idea where I got that name from except it's continuously running water so it gives you this completely still uh water at the top uh, at the top <laughs> gives you this completely still water which you can then it's it's just magical. You take pictures, try and get reflection of the west window with its with its original medieval glass, which was thrown out. It was thrown out, and then um, as part of um, there was some re uh, sort of reinvigoration of the cathedral. 
um, where the choir screen was taken out so that you got the you get the full view all the way down the cathedral um and the idea was to open it up and make it um light and all this so 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 stained glass went stained glass had to go um and yeah so so but the, but, the, but the congregation by the point of the stained glass going was like stop getting rid of our stuff stop it go and get it put it back the stained glass was the um the shields of Ellen of Aquitaine. Um oh, Henry the Third, I think it was, and 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 the, the one of the French kings. Ellen of Aquitaine's badge is higher than the other two on purpose, showing her status, which is pretty cool. But anyway, that's still there, and you can see that I've taken um in my video you should be able to see that glass in the reflection of the water um uh brie has any research been done into Anne Boleyn's cup um what it, i.e what it was used for well cups were used for there was ceremony of cer uh, used in ceremonies because <laughs> i can't think of the word or even say it if i could um but also as gifts as gifts and it's um the 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 provenance of the cup is recorded there um well what they think so they think it just got it got passed down um so it got given as a gift by elizabeth to one of her um i can't remember if it was a lady in waiting or a steward and then passed down the family and they donated it to the church um yeah so uh and then there's one last place I'll tell you about because you might miss it if you go to Salisbury. Um, it's called St. Thomas's uh, Church in Salisbury, not too far from the cathedral with bright doom day, doomsday paintings on and a uh, coat of arms of Elizabeth I. So when Elizabeth, at some point during Elizabeth I's reign, it was ordered that every church would display her coat of arms. Um, I don't know if I've seen another one with them, but they're still there in St. Thomas's Salisbury. Um, and I think I shared this with my patrons. If I didn't, I meant to. Um, again, come over to patreon.com forward slash British history. You get exclusive blogs, exclusive photos of all these places that I'm talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. And you get the um, historian interviews that I do each month are extended and ad free. And you get to ask your own questions for the historians, which is which is fairly cool. I'm going to leave you in a minute, but I have got one more thing that I definitely know that I need to tell you about because it happens tomorrow. If you're a member of my patron, you've already probably bought your ticket, but we're having a Georgian, the Georgians online history festival and the tickets go on sale tomorrow. And if you get in there early, there are 30 tickets. The first 30 tickets have a 10% discount on them and they go live for sale tomorrow. If you're a patron, you can already get hold of your ticket and your tickets are already and forever discounted at 10% off, um, dep not, not dependent on when you buy them. So that's fine. Um, but the Georgian Summit, so speakers so far, Tracy Borman. Tracy Borman's first book was actually um about a mistress of George II and that is what her talk is going to be on and Tony Akini is going to talk about the 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 debauchery and the parties that happened at Blenheim Palace during the Georgian period uh Leary Lynn is talking about Georgian fashion which I mean come on <laughs> like every uh, we, we talk about Tudors and the Stuarts and their fashion amazing but the Georgians well this is what we think of as sort of fairy tale dresses and things like that. This is Georgians, really. Um, Gareth Russell is going to be talking to us about Ireland during the Georgian uh, era, the Hanoverian era. Um, and Dr. Cat will be talking to us about um, people like Cruikshank. In the Georgian period, this is where we start to see um, uh, the, the, the sort of satirical... Um, uh, cartoons, but what they're doing is questioning power. They're questioning, prodding, pointing out the pitfalls, the uh, shortfalls of. 
those in power. And you've got people like Crookshank. Dr. Kat's going to be talking to us about that. And I have at least one more person I'm hoping to confirm. So if you want a little bit of a thing, if, if you would like to delve yourself into the world of the Georgians, have a look at Meet the Georgians by Robert Peel, not the dead prime minister, <laughs> Robert Peel, P-E-A-L. Have a look. It's on Audible. You can order it, I think, um, as an actual book as well. Have a look. You've, you've got Byron. You've got, um, uh, you, you've, got, you've got real pirates of the Caribbean, who are, by the way, women. Um, you've got just... Honestly, the, the incredibly interesting people here. Oh, they, oh, they were Georgians. Oh, they were Georgians. Oh, they were Georgians. Um, Hester Stanhope. Have a look at her story. Just Google her. But she has a whole chapter in uh, in this book. Am amazing woman went to um, the 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 Middle East. She um, completely changed her life, basically. And um, but she was she was crowned <laughs> as queen of the desert she was and then then so her her fortune sort of they went up and down amazing character um she's not in the talks but have a look at the book because she's in there or just google her she's amazing um so the dates for the summit are the 24th till the 26th of march the all of the talks so if you buy your ticket um all of the talks will be available until the end of May. So if you can't join us live, it's no problem. Lots of people um, for the Stuart Summit that we held in at the end of November couldn't come on the actual weekend, but you will be able to access all the talks till the end of May. If you miss the Stuart Summit and you want to come to the Georgian one as well, but you miss the Stuart one, you can actually now buy all the talks as a bundle, as an extra as well to your ticket. Um, we have two live events during the weekend both are on the Sunday evening on Sunday the 26th we have a live Q&A discussion panel um, with with the speakers with many of the speakers as we can get together on the Sunday night um, and then we will have a closing quiz which is a sort of just a fun bring a bottle bring some snacks see what you see what you know see what you don't know uh, quiz at the end of the uh, at the end of the weekend so those tickets go on sale tomorrow unless you're a patron, a patron of mine um, over on Patreon, in which case you can already grab your ticket. Um, but yeah, those go on sale tomorrow. So if you're already signed up to my free Substack, you will get a notification on Substack when those go on sale. So make sure you are, because why not? Um, you'll also get the final newsletter from me uh on sunday as well if you're a member of my Substack, which you can do by um following the link in my bio from instagram so everyone i've kept you for an hour and a quarter which is a wonderful amount of time for you to concentrate and me to concentrate <laughs> so i will leave you now um have a fabulous christmas and um i wish you a wonderful new year um, chewing gums. I think George the Fourth has some of the best royal portraits in a fashion sense. Well, he did. Uh, he brought back tartan as well, didn't he? George the Fourth. It was banned. Um, he brought it back. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. So, thank you very much for joining me. Have a fabulous Christmas and New Year. Um, I hope that 2023 um, is very nice to you. 2022 hasn't been the best I've, i'm hearing from quite a few people so come on 2023 got our faith in you right everybody have a fabulous day bye bye